time to pour yourself a glass because by the time we finish this drink, you're going to understand your numbers and know exactly how to price yourself. Hi, I'm Tony Hoffer and apparently I'm drinking a beer at noon because I thought it'd be a good bit for a pricing video. <laughs> this is part two of pricing. Hopefully by now you've watched part one, seen some of the common mistakes that creative professionals make. In part two, we're really going to get our hands dirty. As creative industries become easier and easier to enter, we're seeing more and more people who struggle with pricing. Specifically, how to account for all the time and money that goes into running a business, not just creating the product that they're creating. In this video, we're going to use real numbers to help you get a handle on what you should be charging. It's going to get kind of nerdy, I apologize, but we're going to make it super simple and by the end, you should know everything you need to know. So we've already gone through the common mistakes in part one, and in part two, we're going to go through three main things that we need to understand before we set our pricing. First, we need to fully understand the terms that we're using. Second, we need to understand how we can calculate our overhead, our costs, and our hours. And third, we simply need to do the math. Once we do these things, getting to a fair, sustainable price is actually really, really simple. So let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is understand what we're actually looking at. So we're going to use an example of a business that made $100,000 in sales. This is called gross income. That means all the money that comes into the business. So we're going to pretend, for the sake of our example, that this business booked 40 jobs at $2,500 each and came up with $100,000 in sales. Now, most of us know what it costs us to actually perform a job. So for this business, we're gonna say it cost them $500 for every $2,500 job they performed. We refer to this as cost of goods sold or COGS. So this is things like contract labor, job supplies, anything that's related to the job itself. So for this example, that's $500 per job, which leaves us with $20,000 of COGS, cost of goods sold at the end of the year for the 40 jobs that we did. Now let's stop here. After that 20,000, we have $80,000 left. The term for this is gross profit. And this is the most dangerous term for any business owner to see. It's critically important for you to understand gross profit is not profit. In fact, it's not even that close. People in the creative industry run into this problem a lot because the things that we're creating don't cost a lot to create. So I could go out the door right now, use all my photography equipment, go do a shoot, and not really spend much money. So my costs of goods are relatively low, but the money I get for that shoot is not profit. We know from part one that any business has overhead expenses. So that's anything from equipment to subscriptions, accounting, or rent. So let's say for the sake of this example that we have another $20,000 in overhead expenses. As we look, we see that now all of our expenses are accounted for and we have $60,000 left. So that's profit, except that it's not. If you ask any business owner with more than one employee, they'll tell you this can't be the profit because we haven't paid anyone yet. So let's say that using this example, we wanna make a $50,000 a year salary for ourselves. So we'll take that out, we'll have $10,000 left, and that finally is the business profit. Profit is money that the business can use to do whatever, whether that's reinvest in the business or grow, buy new equipment, try to expand into a new field, or as a self-employed person, we can keep it ourselves. But it's really important to know what actual profit is. This is the part where you're probably saying, I'm self-employed, I get to keep all the money. And I'm gonna respond and I'm gonna go on my salary tangent. <laughs> Any self-employed person needs to put themselves on a salary. This is gonna do a few things for you. One, it's gonna help you set income goals for you and the business. So rather than just keeping all the money that comes in, we're actually setting significant goals, both for us and for the profit and health of the business. This is more important than you think. Think about using your credit card. When you use your credit card, you just swipe, swipe, swipe. So if you try to remember back, you can maybe remember the $100 charges or the $300 charges, but when you get the bill at the end of the month, it's always higher because you don't remember the $1 you spent on gum or something like that. Paying yourself a salary is very similar to that. If the only thing we're doing is just keeping whatever money is left over, it's very easy to lose control of how much that is and how much we're spending. Second, knowing your profit numbers helps you when you're ready to grow or outsource. You know how much money the business has that it can spend on other things. When we hired Lindsay, our first full-time employee four years ago, 
we knew what our profit margin was. Having that profit margin helps you understand where you can grow and when you can grow. Third, and maybe most importantly, knowing that profit margin helps you adjust for supply and demand when things get slow or are going well because you know how much leeway you have, but also it helps you handle people that ask for discounts. Now giving someone a discount is easy when you just think, oh, I get to keep all the money afterwards. It's much more difficult when you look at the numbers and say, I'm only making $10,000 in profit. Every bit I take out of that is money I can't reinvest in the business. And if I go over that 10,000 eventually, that's money I don't have to pay rent or pay for my kid's school. So it gives you a much more realistic picture of where this money goes when you start giving discounts. So for the sake of simplicity, these are the four categories where our money goes. Cost of goods sold, overhead, salary, and profit. Now it gets a lot more complicated than that when you actually dive into specific categories, but we're generalizing here just to make it easy. Those are the four categories. Figuring out the cost of goods sold is pretty easy. As we said, most people already know that. Figuring out our salary is also pretty easy because most of us understand how much money we wanna make from our business or how much we need per year to get by. The difficult one to figure out is overhead cost because we can't associate that with any particular job. It's money that we're spending on you know, our Photoshop subscription or things like that if we're in photography. So that's not money that we assign to any particular client, it's just money the business spends. The good thing is, if you've done any bookkeeping at all, you probably have this already written down. So if you look at a profit and loss sheet, like this one from QuickBooks, you'll see anything under the gross profit level that's listed as an expense, that is all overhead cost. None of that is related to the job itself. If you don't use any bookkeeping software and you don't have this number handy, we've got a tool at the end of this video that's gonna help you figure out what your overhead costs are. So for our business, we have all sorts of different jobs that we do, and all of them have different costs of goods associated with them. Some have a small amount of cost of goods, some have a lot, just depending on the job. If our associate photographers book a wedding, our cost of goods go up because we have to pay them out of that. If we book something that's not very involved, our cost of goods are pretty minimal. Either way, no matter what the cost of goods are, we still have to account for the overhead in each of those jobs. And we need to spread that $20,000 that we set aside for overhead across all the different jobs we're performing. As we try to price the work we do, we need to remember that all of the overhead throughout the year needs to get accounted for in every dollar that we make. So to drive the point home, we're actually gonna look at the real graph from our business last year. So if you look at this and you take our gross income, our cost of goods were around 31% of what we actually made. So again, some of those jobs are higher than 31%, some are much lower, but overall, on average, 31% of the money we made went right to cost of goods. You can also see here that almost a quarter of our money, 24%, was overhead. That includes Lindsay's salary and lots of other things. So of every dollar we made, 24 cents of that went straight to overhead. Next, as the business owners, Amy and I kept about 24% of the money we made as our salary. That leaves us with about a 19% profit margin for our business. Along the same lines of calculating our overhead costs, we also need to calculate our overhead hours. Here's why. I hear a lot of people in my industry say, well, I spend about 40 hours on every wedding I do, but we need to calculate our overhead hours into this as well. Usually if I ask someone that says they spend 40 hours on a wedding, how many weddings they do, they'll say maybe they do 20 or 25. And then I'll ask them how many hours a week they work and they say they're usually working 50 or 60 hours a week. The math of that simply doesn't add up. All of that extra time, that is overhead hours. Even if the time we're spending on marketing, networking, or even computer maintenance aren't billed to any particular job, we still need to account for our time because that's obviously still work. And just like overhead cost, Figuring out our overhead hours is often easier if we look on a weekly or a monthly basis. Usually you know about how many hours you spend a month networking, whereas you can't really assign a particular amount of time to networking one particular job. So if we sit down and write all the tasks we do and calculate it out, let's just say for the sake of the example that we spend about 15 hours a week doing various things that count as overhead hours. Well, that 15 hours a week ends up being roughly 800 hours a year. Let's jump back to our $100,000 example. With that example, we had a $50,000 salary and it took us 40 jobs to create that income. 
So if each job takes us 40 hours, that's 1600 hours a year. Then we add our overhead hours, which is another 800, and that gets us to around 2400 hours. So in reality, we're actually spending about 60 hours per job rather than 40. When we break that down, using this example, our $50,000 really equals roughly $20 per hour for the work we're doing. Now let's compare that to what we thought at the beginning, which is 20,000 in expenses, we get to keep the other 80, and we're only working 40 hours for each of our 40 jobs. Well, in that example, we thought we were making $50 an hour, but once we calculate our overhead, we're all the way down to around $20 an hour. It's probably time for a drink. It's important to remember every business is different. This is just an example that we're using. So to go back to our graph for another example, if Amy and I in general are keeping 25% of the gross income, that equals about $12,500 each. That's obviously not enough for us to make a living doing what we do. Even if we wanted to keep all of the profit for ourselves and not leave anything left in the business, that's still only around 40 some thousand dollars for two people. So for our business, our gross income goals need to be a lot higher than that, not only so we can pay our other people, but so we can make a reasonable salary as well. So we went through the terms, we talked through how to calculate overhead costs, and now we're gonna tell you about something really cool. First, you can totally figure this out for yourself. You can use all the numbers that you generate based on your business, plug them in for the packages that you offer or the products you offer, and get a reasonable idea of what you need to be charging based on that. But for a lot of us, it gets kind of complicated because as a photographer, I might have different packages that I offer that all have different costs of goods and the overhead needs to get calculated into them. If I'm a plumber, I might need to calculate the difference between simply fixing a clogged toilet and running pipe for an entire apartment complex. For many of us, there's several different aspects of this that we have to calculate together. This is why we created and are now unveiling Cost Cruncher. Cost Cruncher is a tool that does all of these calculations for you. You simply put in your desired salary, copy some numbers off your P&L, or you can just make them up, and then you say how much you want to work or what the different packages are that you want to charge. It will automatically calculate that, tell you what your profit level is, how much you're making per hour, and even calculate what your overhead is per job and what your cost of goods are per job. It can even tell you how many jobs you need to perform just to break even before you profit. As I said in part one, my friends the Morbys came up with this spreadsheet that they were giving to their workshop attendees to try to figure these numbers out for themselves. So we took the spreadsheet, put it in a very easy to use form called Cost Cruncher that only takes about five or 10 minutes. You can tweak it as much as you want and it'll just keep generating new numbers in real time. It's super simple to use, and there is nothing like this out there. We're really excited about it. So if you're interested in using that, go to cost-cruncher.com. We are charging a bit of money for it because we've spent a couple months working on it, and we're really excited about it. Whether you use it or not, we hope this video helped you better understand the overhead that needs to go into your pricing and helped you get a hold of what your numbers need to be. You can check out Cost Cruncher at cost-cruncher.com. You can see all of our work at hofferphotography.com or Hoffer Photography on social media. And you can see the Morby's work at morbyphotography.com or Morby Photography on social media. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to check out all of our future videos. I didn't even get to finish my drink.